beautiful artists and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. All right, so this week we are well into spring. Summer is right around the corner. We're gonna do some florals. Yes, I know, florals for spring, groundbreaking. Uh, but they are just always beautiful and we've not done a daisy yet uh, on this channel, so I really wanted to do one. Uh, they're some of my favorite flowers and I think they're gonna look really pretty uh, with the contrast of the background color as well. And this is totally customizable. You could mix up the background color if you like. I have my four standard brushes that I'm going to use that I use in most classes. Um, this kit comes with a square brush, a medium sized pointed brush and two small detail brushes. I'm gonna get those in the water cup off the side of the screen here. And then again, just for the background step, this is customizable if you'd like, but I'm gonna do one of my favorite colors, which is this phthalo green mixed with white. I would recommend that you go more on the lighter side since our daisy is gonna be white. So that way it's a little bit easier to cover it without multiple coats. If you'd like to see a full materials list of everything that you need to paint along, check the description box below. I think we are ready to jump on in. So this background step is easy as can be. All we're going to do is mix up our lovely background color of choice, however you like, and make sure you have a little bit of water into that paint to help it spread nice and smooth and soak into that canvas texture. And truly you can fill this in any which way that you like. I'm probably just gonna stick with mostly up and down brush strokes, but we actually do want more of a solid one color look. A lot of times I'll say, leave the variation uh, within like the streak. Sometimes that looks good. But for today, I actually want just like a solid pastel color, about like so. And again, just that water is gonna help you spread the paint a little bit more smoothly. And just filling this whole canvas in, all in its entirety. Plenty of paint here. Just going in with just water too. And since we're working with acrylic, we're just moving quick. A nice thin layer will also dry a little quicker. All right, and no such thing as perfection. Don't worry too much if you still have a little bit of color variation, it's all right. Yeah, once we get this whole background all nice and filled in with our main background base color here, we are gonna step away and let this layer dry before we come back and add our actual daisy. So we have almost a watercolor, nice saturated look here. All right, and I'm gonna call that good and step away and let this first layer dry and we'll come back with a whole bunch more. I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a completely dry background here and a fresh uh, palette paper here with all new fresh colors. So I have a fair amount of white, some yellow, a little bit of orange, some uh, burnt sienna type warm brown here, a little bit of my ultramarine blue and some black. I got fresh water and rinsed my brushes at break as well. Let's go ahead and jump right back on into it. So we're going to do the middle part of our flower first, um, but we don't wanna go too far out with our petals. So I'm gonna do a little bit of like a four directional, four cardinal direction uh, plus sign here. And that's gonna help us space out this next step. And we wanna try to make 
all of these four end at about the same level. So it's gonna be a little bit more space on this side, of course, than up here. So we have a horizontal canvas here. And then I'm gonna go into the center here and just do a nice circle for the center. We're going to fill that in just with solid white for now. All right. Just a solid white circle and then we'll let that dry for a bit. And then I think I'm gonna downgrade my brush size to my second to smallest. And these four first petals, I'm gonna come in here and sort of fatten up first with also just white. So we're just working with white right now, blocking out our space. And then from the top, just a little tiny bit of a curve there at the top for our pretty petal shape. We got a long oval shape here. And we're just blocking out these main shapes right now. And again, we want these four petals to be about the same size. So it's gonna sort of be our guide here. But nature is never like super meticulously computer-like perfect. There's always a little bit of just like natural I don't even want to say imperfection because nature is perfect in its imperfection, but a little bit of asymmetry, a little bit of movement. Okay, if this were to be like a photo, but also it's painting too, so there's a little bit of artistic liberty that we all have as painters. All right. But. We don't want to make every single petal exactly perfect, is my point there. And it can be tempting to make them all look exactly the same size with this method that I use to space them out. All right, and these are these front petals. It looks like we'll have room for another row in between. Some a little bit skinnier, some a little bit fatter, some a little bit more tapered, but it's subtle. They're all pretty similar. These are our front row. It's looking super cute. I think I'm actually gonna grab my medium sized brush now for my filling in, just to expedite things a little bit. I like to use a smaller brush for my sketching. I don't often use the teeny tiniest brush. Save that guy just for the smallest, teeniest, tiniest of details. But usually you can have very light pressure on the brush here and on your brush strokes and get a pretty fine line. Or you can push a little harder and get a thicker line. So they are in that way very versatile, especially like this brush I'm using now. Maybe one day I'll try to do a whole painting just with one brush. It'll be a one brush challenge. All right. 
very pretty color contrast, I think, with the white and the teal. I think it's going to look nice too with the yellow center. I debated, I think a lime green or a pink would look really nice for background colors as well. It's a hard decision. All right, that's looking pretty cute. Just want to make sure everything is pretty even and balanced. Now I'm going to grab my second to smallest detail brush again. We're going to do some little peekaboo behind the scenes. Little petals, second row. And they're going to go behind. So they're going to be kind of poking through here. And we'll take a little bit of gray there, sort of in the in between. As well, but it's also okay if you have a little bit of peekaboo green. That's one of the reasons why we just did this whole background layer first. And some of these petals, you might only see a little bit of them, whereas some of them you might see more, and that's okay. However, it ends up is fine. Just using a light gray here. Feel free to use your smaller brush whenever you want to for details like this. Okay, cute little background row of petals here for a nice full looking flower. So cute and so subtle. Love working with just white and gray. Sometimes it's just relaxing, <laughs> simpler. All right, very narrow little details and we're being patient here. This is our whole painting today, it's just this flower. That's all we're focusing on right now. Okay, very pretty. And by the time we get around all the way back to the beginning, I'm hoping that the center here of our flower is mostly dry and ready for its first layer of color. But it's possible, I'm in a very dry area, so it's possible that wherever you are, if it is more moist, or if you've used your color a little thicker, you might need a minute to let that center dry. Oh, that mine's looking pretty close to where it needs to be. All right, just making sure everything here looks balanced. Cute. All right, so you see my brush. I think I'm going to take that same brush though and just take my yellow. I'm going to do a bright sunny yellow here in the center for this base color here looking beautiful. All right, we have our second layer complete. Let's go ahead and step away one more time. We're gonna let this second mid layer dry and then we'll come back with our final touches. I'll see everyone in another couple minutes. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a mostly dry background. I'm impatient today, um, but it doesn't have to be 100%. It's like 99% dry. 
and that is gonna be just fine for what we're gonna do. So first things first, I'm going to go into my yellow center and get a second coat on there if you need it. So I don't wanna see any peekaboo background whatsoever. Cute. All right. Now we are going to go into our petals for a little bit and we're mostly just going to work with black, uh, like a, not all the way black though, a little bit white. So very dark gray. And come into our petals and we're going to do the sort of quick and oftentimes disjointed little outline slash shadow. You wanna have just the right amount of water. And we're just going to be outlining our petals and also where they meet the center just sort of fine tunes everything adds that second element on top of that background layer let's do a little bit more here you could even do this step with a pen like a paint pen but I'm sticking with the brush. And if you go too heavy handed anywhere, you can always bring some of that background color back up to the foreground. I'll show you. So I went a little heavy handed on that bottom petal. So you can always rinse your brush, grab a little bit more white, kind of tone things down slightly. We'll also sort of blend it to gray, but that's okay. Okay, we're just starting with this black. We're almost black, but we do have a couple other little colors to add, so be very light-handed with this step. Not a full outline, more of a shadow. Also more of a sort of illustratory look. A very important step. Cleans everything up nicely. Very satisfying. My flower is a little bit off center and it makes me a little crazy. Not gonna lie, but I'm trying to sort of cheat down a little bit here on the bottom, just a tiny bit. And then up here, I'll go on top of the petals. Instead, subtle, but helps a little bit. That's just gonna have to be the way it is. All right. Again, disjointed brush strokes, not worried about perfectly outlining each one, mostly just the ends here and then the beginnings. Looking cute, despite its non-centeredness. I always get to pick the nicest part of my paintings for the thumbnails. So it'll probably look centered when you click on this. Okay, and very cute. 
I almost like to leave it a little bit loose too in some areas just for that painterly feel. So we're not trying to be a robot. All right, very cute. Let's go back into our center for a minute. And I'm going to now grab some of this gorgeous orange and mix that with a little bit of my yellow. And I'm gonna come up with just a beautiful yellow orange. And we're gonna take this yellow orange and do sort of like a crescent moon shape along the side here. So, and then sort of taper off into a center to create that look of it being round. Okay, then I took a little bit more orange and tacked it back into sort of the crescent there. And then I'm gonna go a little bit further even. I'll go a little tiny bit all the way around. I want to have a little bit of that light yellow showing still. Cute. And then I'm going to take a little bit of my warm brown and go a little bit darker actually. Just a pinch of black. for our pretty shadow color right here. And I'm going to add a few little sort of half circle brush strokes that sort of overlap each other, doing their little shadows of the center part here, of the pollen inside of the flower. And I'll have a few sort of working their way towards the center as well, but similar to that orange, we're kind of going along that half moon pattern, half moon shape. One brush stroke there was probably too heavy handed. So as always, you can adjust if needed. and tone anything down that you might need to. And then let's take a little bit of white. Have a nice highlight in here as well with those same kinds of brush strokes. And then I'm sort of lightly blending it all together a little bit. Toning it down just a smidge. All right, that looks just about where I was going with that. And then we're gonna take some actual black and take that all the way along the outside for a nice clean line of separation there. And also just sort of accentuates that circular shape again as sort of the final shadow. Just a little bit of black. I guess I should be using my tiny brush. <laughs> All right. Looking good. A final last couple touches here, but super cute. Let's take a little bit of a light, very light blue with a little pinch of black in it as well. We'll have a beautiful sort of foggy day gray blue. And we're gonna take this shadow color and add a few swipes of blue shadow along our white. Perfect. 
just an accent color and an additional shadow. Cute. And then I think I will use my very smallest brush for any very small details here in the back layer of petals. We're going to do a few little brush strokes of black in a similar way. We added our gray blue. Very cute. All right. Finishing touches here. Very nice. And let's take a little bit of that black also in our front petals too. Okay. And then you could leave your daisy as is, but I feel like I want to add a little bit of yellow sort of in the center part. So this is just like a traditional all white daisy, but they come in a couple different color variations. Cute. So I grab my medium second to smallest actually brush again and take a little bit of this light yellow. I'm just gonna take that right in the center part here for just a beautiful sunny daisy. A little bit maybe more unique than the all white one. And I like it already. I'm glad I added it. That wasn't in my original. <laughs> but you can always get creative. I want to encourage everybody always to get creative and mix it up, make it your own. And if you are painting along today, I do have a Facebook group called The Art Club where you can share your work. We would love to have you over there. Link in the description box below to join. Can't wait to see what you do with your creations. All right, and we are keeping it simple today with this easy daisy painting. Let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to see you over in the art club as well. And that is all the instruction that I have for us this week. So until next time, happy painting and stay creative.